So here's a, this is the fastest smartphone in the world, right? The, on the new 7 nanometer Kirin 980 in the high. So who are you? I'm uh, Arne Heckemann. I'm responsible for the smartphone portfolio at Huawei in Europe. In Europe? Yes, exactly. So uh, is Europe the most important market for Huawei? It's um, the most important after China, I would say. So right now, obviously in China, we have um, number one market position, but in number Europe, one. Europe for us is yeah. a key market you know, on the globe, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're totally number one in China, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Europe is definitely bigger than the US because the US is hard to find one. True, Isn't I mean, for, for Europe, we have plenty of customers and countries that we're dealing with. So now we have uh, several countries where we are number one or number two already. Um, and we have a massive growth in France this year. So Europe is actually very important. Massive for growth in France. How did yeah. that happen? Um, what kind of growth? Can you say anything? or? I don't have the figures with me because uh, I'm more on the product side. I'm less on the business side. But you can see with the P20 Pro and with the P20, we had a massive growth in France because people really liked the camera performance that we brought with the new Leica triple camera. So it's important to have a good camera. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely. everyone, what people really want is great camera and great battery life. And now also with the new Mate 20 Pro, we can deliver both of that. Yeah, Mate is like battery. It kind of means battery, right? It's always been 4,000. Exactly. It's I been mean, a huge yeah, battery yeah, life yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. And all these iPhones and stuff, they're half the battery life. Is it true? Um, I'm not sure about the battery life, but battery capacity for sure. Right? If you look at Mate three years, four years back, it was always 4,000. And now with the Mate 20 Pro, it's the first time we go beyond. We go 4,200 milliampere hour, which will give you even more battery life with a new chipset, new AI, and everything being optimized for the new device. So uh, that's exciting because uh, you want to have crazy performance, but you want to run it for a very long time. That's a very, very hard nut to crack. And exactly. The, uh, the yeah. The high-speaking guys are really working hard on the making the best ARM chipset ever. I mean, it's, it's the whole team working on that, right? So you have high silicon with the Kirin 980. Uh, using the latest ARM architecture with uh, A76-based uh, cores. Then you have big cores, latest. middle cores, that's the latest. There's nothing newer announced by ARM. Exactly. It's the fastest. Yeah, it's that, the that, best that's architecture. It. Yeah, for And the fastest GPU. Exactly, yeah. G76 GPU. So we're really using the latest and greatest to build great experiences. And then we use AI with a dual MPU. Now with the Kirin 980 has two cores to drive AI experiences. Right? And is we that the real two core? Or what is this two core? Yeah, it's a, it's a dual core NPU basically. So it's two NPUs more or less. Is that important? Do you want to run one AI thing while the other one is running on the other core? Uh, pretty much, yeah. So they have two different um, professions, let's say. But in general, we can do much more than compared to last year with the single NPU. So much more? Yeah, I mean, performance went up more than 150%. I think it's 168 or something. I don't have the figure. But the performance went up a lot. The uh, energy efficiency for AI went uh, up a lot, about 80%. So now we can go from still video, uh, still picture, which we had in the Mate 10 Pro, for example, to full video. So the Mate, 10, Mate 20 Pro is able to understand real-time video, what you're filming. Uh, if there's people in the video, and you can adapt to that, and you can put different settings and themes. That's the main use, right, for AI right now, is to improve the camera. It's um, photo and video, right? It's kind of like the blockbuster right now, is it, no? for this AI thing. It's the biggest thing that consumers see, because photo is so important to people, and camera is something that everyone cares about. And there's we, AI all over it. There is AI all over it, right. Because you get, you get better pictures, and at the same time, you get more easy operation, right? So with AI, we can adapt the settings for you, so you don't have to deal with it. Um, and we have these two things coming together, thanks to AI. And uh, if we just, uh, can we quickly go on your camera? Yeah, sure. And for example, one of the things I've been waiting for for many years is bokeh video. Oh yeah, that's and cool. And now there's a bokeh video. If you go to background blur. And uh, if I can hold it towards you. Towards me. Yeah. yeah. So it should uh, blur out the background, right? Yeah. Um, and that's that's definitely AI stuff. Exactly. So this is only possible because it real time records, uh, real time understands what you are filming right now, right? Because we can track the skeleton. So if I move my hand, it will track the skeleton. If more people will come into the scene, it will track multiple skeletons at real time. And in the past, you had to do this on like some Adobe tools or whatever in post processing lots of work and now you you see what you get this is real-time result 
And uh, if more people appear, they might also come in focus, but maybe not. Maybe it takes only the, the closest one. Yeah. But uh, this is very interesting because potentially this means, for example, for my kind of work, maybe I can start doing video blogging with the phone and look professional, you know? Because you want to blur the background. Well, hopefully you can, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, be, be my guest. You just try it. See how it's going to work for you. But so far, it's just for 1080p, that functionality, right? Yes, that's no correct. 4K. Exactly. Even so, though you have the fastest chip ever, the fastest dual AI chip ever and everything, it's not enough for 4K. Well, we're always improving, right? So now, with the P20 series, we have the best smartphone photography, according to the French DxO mark. Now, we're going into video, and uh, obviously we have an ambition there. So now you have uh, AI effects with 1080p, you have a 4K 30 frames stabilization based on AI as well. 4K stabilization in 4K? Yes, using AI and OIS at the same time. Optical and, there's optical on all three lenses? No, there's only optical on the Taylor lens. So on the zoom lens there's zoom. optical. On top we support with Huawei AIS. So now you can use uh, zoom in video with stabilization. Really good picture, really good quality. And uh, um, is there any chance that uh, you know there's some kind of scene uh, trade shows? I see this uh, shotgun microphone mode. Uh, you know shotgun what I would want to do is if I record you, yeah. I want to click something and it only records your sound straight ahead, and it cancels out on the sides. You know? Okay. You don't have this. Right? Uh, we don't have that yet. No. Okay. I, I just I would have been. But it's cool. a cool feature. Yeah. I mean, but like you can you can connect a Bluetooth mic. Yeah, and, uh, yeah use of course. A Bluetooth mic, yes. you have good sound. Sure. You can connect um, like digital mics with the USB-C. Right? So there's already from Sennheiser or those kind of guys. You have already USB-C headsets or mics that you can connect and then just record with that. Nice. And uh, uh, this this is uh, so you managing a lot of the Huawei in Europe. How much how much are people using PC mode? Like, can you say anything or is it um, I don't I don't have the figures because we we don't really track the data. But we see take up, so people are very interested in using PC mode, whether for entertainment or for work. You see trends going into this area. So there is some traction and it's still there. I'm happy that, you know, because sometimes some of the Honor phones, for example, they don't have the PC mode, even though they get the same chipset later. I, do, I don't like know what Honor is doing. Yeah, they're yeah. doing something else. Okay, right? yeah. You're, not a, you're doing your own thing. Well, you Honor is a different brand, so yeah. um, they, they do a different approach. Um, what we've been showing here today is for example using PC mode in, a, in an enterprise environment together with Mobile Iron, together with Google we've been showing PC mode and how you could work, really work using PC mode and just your smartphone, replacing notebook. Um, I don't do it yet because I have some uh, tools that I have to rely on um, that require some... No, it's not secret tools, but it's just like some, some standard industry tools. Um, yeah. yeah, so standard industry tools, uh, maybe they run on Windows, let's say. Exactly. And uh, so that's the thing, uh, Qualcomm has a partnership with Microsoft. I just think it would be so cool, okay, I don't want to get any secrets or anything, it would be so cool if Microsoft could partner with Huawei to support Windows apps on Android. Well, just check what we announced at CES Asia earlier this year, and then you will find some cool stuff. What did you announce? Is it the Citrix partnership? The no, smartphone? we announced um, PC mode or cloud PC on Huawei smartphones. So we're already doing this in, in Asia. So you you are giving a full PC on the cloud? People yeah. People can on exactly. their PC On the mode. smartphone with a PC mode. And then you're fully set. You can scale performance. You can scale whether you want a game or work for an And run Windows office, apps. And just run Windows. Nice. So it's happening. It's happening in Asia, definitely. Because uh, what I'm thinking, you know, is ARM. I do a lot of ARM. My website's called ARM Devices. Oh, okay. And it's all about the ARM chips. Yeah. And uh, this is so powerful. It it's, should be fast enough to run everything for, for 99% of people. It can, in theory, you should be able to run all the productivity apps people want. Sure, you know? sure. Because Just the main, right there. what kind of system you're going to choose. Android today has millions of apps you can choose from, right? There's Windows, uh, there's Microsoft Office, there is WPS Office, there is uh, Google Docs Suite. So whatever you like, there is a flavor on Android already and which you just can use. So if you just check your screen one second, uh, you know, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know if I'm the only guy who thinks, who has this opinion, but I, I thought it'd be cool if, uh, well, now it's too late, but it'd be nice if, uh, you know, the camera, the sensor and everything, if it was uh, not in a notch, but it was just above the notch. And there'd be no notch. Well, nobody said this at this event. 
The thing is, you am I the only one you, actually missing that? No, you're not the only one, but it's just a matter of taste, right? You can always go to display, and then you go to uh, that one, and then you go to notch, and you just say, I don't want it. I want the default standard layout, and then you can black out the whole notch, right? So you have a black area, you still have the benefit of putting notifications here. But it's a different approach. It's up to you. You can decide. So EMUI 9 on Android Pi yeah. gives you all those opportunities. You just choose. It's just the thing, you know, it's just that there's so... Usually I have at least 14 notifications at the same time, you know, it's just full. And there's no way there's no way to do it here anymore. It's just going to say, oh, you have seven and click to show them. Yeah. But it's not going to show you what it is. Because there's a notch, it's blocking the whole true, view. True, true. I mean, you can always scroll down and just check all the details, right? But maybe um, yeah, then uh, the Mate 20 would be more funny because it's less notch. But it's still a little thing there. But then uh, and another thing that I kind of wish is... Uh, uh, so, so you have a, a headphone, right? It's a USB-C jack. So you, you don't do the headphone jack? On the Mate 20 you get a headphone jack. On the Mate 20 Pro you just have the digital one. Because we had to make room for the battery and all the antennas and stuff. Ah, so it takes up room. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the USB... Uh, so Sorry, the 3.5 mil jack is a massive component, right? So it takes mm -hmm. room. And at the same time, you get analog audio, which today is kind of like aging. This gives you full digital, it gives you high-res quality up to your ears with the headsets in the box. We have all the opportunity for Bluetooth stereo, right? So why stick with Potentially you can do noise cancelling and stuff on a, on a small package. But still, uh, it, it just seems like, uh, yeah, just the small things that, you know. Uh, but then the Mate 20 is more, it's kind of like uh, uh, providing stuff that some of the people that, you know, headphone jack, yeah, less notch, yeah. but it's still a little bit of notch. Well, it's, it's, again, it is what people choose and what people decide to want to have, right? Where do you put your priorities? Um, my priority is good hand operation. And to be honest, I'm using Bluetooth headsets all the time. Um, so I, I don't have really a big temper for that, personally speaking. Um, so it's really about what you choose, what you think as a user is right for you. Uh, we in Huawei have the different choices to make. So we can give you the opportunity. You go for the Mate 20, you go for the Mate 20 Pro. Maybe the Mate series is not for you anymore in creativity. So you look at the P series, it's really up to you. And what do you do with the light? It's just a slower chipset, but similar? Well, the, the light is sharing the same um, ambitions like the Mate series, right? It's, it's built to empower people to create or to build their passion in, in, I don't know, business or whatever. So really people that put smartphone at core and center of their daily lives and digital experiences, this is where the Mate series fits. The light series is everything slightly scaled down, slightly slower chipset, it's slightly great, smaller battery, but it's a really good bang for the buck. I have, uh, I don't know about it's, your... It's like uh, affordable. Yeah, yeah, of course. Extremely affordable, the yeah. light. And it's a beautiful product. It's yeah. really good looking. All right. So uh, available this month. Yes. Europe is going to go, you're going to get very busy. Oh yeah, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's just going to keep growing and uh, you already overtook Apple. In some areas, yes, we did. In quantity. In quantity, yeah. Yeah, overall quantity, but maybe it's because there's a lot of low, low cost phones too. But maybe you can overtake them in the high end too. Is that your plan? Uh, well, there's always a plan, right? And, and, and hitting for number two is not an ambition. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking into growing. We're looking into growth. We do hope that we can sell more Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro than we sold the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro, um, which is like about 10 million units during the past 10 months. So obviously we have high ambitions. And the X, is it going to be exciting to have a huge seven inch? Um, it, it, once again, it depends on what you would like to have. Um, the X, we are focusing right now on the Asian market. Um, so there is no direct launch plans for the European market, simply because Europeans have uh, a better preference for smaller screens and they're not yet into the big uh, devices like Asia is. Cool. At the Mate 20 Pro, Mate 20 event. And uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm Daniel. And this uh, is our Mate, new Mate 20 device. This is a Mate 20 Pro right here. And uh, yeah. you are demonstrating uh, PC mode, right? Yes, uh, well, this PC mode, especially for Huawei. So, so you can see this is the wireless projection. And you can, the same with the Mate 10. But uh, well, wireless, 
No, well, it's wireless it's, support. Uh, you can see the school. How's the uh, uh, connectivity, the speed? It depends on the quality of the Wi-Fi, right? Right now, is that interference a little bit? Yeah. But it can still work with the cable. Cable yeah. is also okay. Sure, sure. You can you can connect it with the cable. And that's a display port. Display and uh, play sounds. Yeah. Well, both are okay. And uh, Not only USB the... in out. This is uh, for the enterprise. Enterprise yeah, yeah. solution, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is PC model. We just use it to show our solution. Yeah, it's for the business. Yeah, business, business market. Yeah, yeah. Right. So here we have um, the May 20 Pro, right? This is a Pro uh, connected to a, a Type C dongle with HDMI, USB, USB, U, uh, USB, mouse and keyboard. Mouse, keyboard, and another one is Ethernet. Internet? Oh no. No, Ethernet. Is over LTE keyboard. internet, right? Keyboard. So hi, so who are you? What's your name? Just call me Ray. Ray and, uh, uh, you work on the R&D for the gaming. What is special about the gaming on this product? Uh, I think uh, you, can, you can play the, the game just like uh, our PC. We, we are awesome and keyboard. So it's like PC gaming. Uh, using the Mali G76, very powerful. G uh, what is this game we're playing right now? You're playing a knife out. Knife, knife, knife out. Knife out. So, is it also possible to connect to Ethernet dongle to get a faster internet? Can you use gigabit Ethernet, or is always only using the Wi-Fi or using Wi-Fi? Wi cannot use cable Internet. No cable. Faster. No need. No need. Uh, I'm Matthew Leone, I'm with Huawei's technical staff in the USA. And, uh, right here you're showing the new uh, Huawei, uh, what's it called, Panda Bear? Uh, this is a 3D live maker. So with these uh, front-facing 3D scan, face scanning, you can actually scan any object? Yeah, we can scan 3D objects. So the front-facing camera on the Mate 20 Pro has a depth sensor technology. So we're combining that hardware technology custom algorithms, computer vision algorithms that allow us to build a model of this panda. So, so custom algorithms. Yes. So these are exclusive to Huawei's Mate 20 Pro phone. Why? Uh, they're going to be exclusive. Well, they're, they're built from Huawei's technical staff and they're custom for Huawei's Mate 20 Pro depth sensor technology. So for example, the iPhone right now doesn't scan anything like that. Correct, that's, that's to my knowledge. Uh, and so, uh, right now, uh, how long does it take? Uh, right now, the, the scanning process will take maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then yeah. the post-processing will take roughly 30 seconds. Can we try? Sure, yeah, we can run a demo here. Can I handle this one? Uh, I'll, I'll show you how you to, to do it. I'll show you how okay. to handle, yeah. So we have a series of processes that we So he has to lie down first. Yeah, so what we're going to do is lie down on the table, and the computer vision algorithms can tell that there's a panda sitting on this table. That's what this blue outline is telling us. So I want to position this above the panda so that we can start the process. And if I hit the button... Maybe uh, my camera is doing an interference <laughs> on it. Uh, this is a good question, maybe. Okay, so we start the scanning process now. So the display will start to show the green area. So the green areas are telling us that we want to expose those areas to the front-facing camera. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly rotating the panda so we can capture uh, all sides. And if I put my hand in front, it's going to corrupt the image or not? Uh, no, the, the algorithm technology that we have included here is going to separate the hand from the model. Nice. 
it's also going to separate the background. So you can see there's lots of activity going on in the background. But we're tracking the panda that's sitting in front of us. So it's, it's a panda tracking technology. <laughs> it's a 3D object recognition and tracking. And you gave it a very high resolution scan, or is it just going to be a little low resolution uh, render at the end? Well, the, the technology itself is capable of uh, sub-millimeter precision. So what we're trying to do here is create a user experience that's friendly for casual users. So the process that we're going through here is designed to try to help them in this process. So most of the technology that's commercial or professional level is very difficult to use. So we want to try to uh, lower that barrier to entry. So once we have the 3D model here. You can zoom in. So he's very high fidelity. He could be a uh, totally, you could put him into games potentially. Right. We want users to use this for new augmented reality content. So what we can see is just the... Yeah. All the toy makers just got very, very happy today. Right? <laughs> right. They're going to be selling all their toys even more. Because right. people want to scan them in. Right, so we want to be able to have users quickly generate new 3D content on the device. So they don't need any special hardware, just the Mate 20 Pro. Do you have to teach it anything about the, where the legs are and everything, or it does it automatically with AI? Yeah, so what we do is once we've captured the model, we'll go into this next step where we're going to bring the model to life. And what we're going to do is we call it rigging process. So the rigging process is an AI technology that will allow us to fit a skeleton to the 3D model. So it knows the position of the panda legs, the head, the arms. It's a little bit funny, the belly. That's, that's totally automatic. Yeah, this is all happening. So we have a number of little scripted sequences. It can only do this uh, by uh, things that have legs and arms, right? Or correct. We, we want something to be human shaped. So we'll, we'll fit a human model to this teddy bear or this panda bear. Uh, what we can also do is try to bring it into uh, augmented reality. So we'll use the rear-facing camera. Yeah. We'll try to get a plane for us to uh, drop the panda into. It's just dropping, dropping pandas everywhere. Yeah, the world's going to be filled with pandas. Nice. So now the panda can walk around our little space here. Let's hope Trump is uh, okay with all this. <laughs> Do you think uh, it's going to be available in, uh, in the US, this uh, panda scanning technology? So we, we haven't announced a date for the software release, but we expect that to be coming. Ah, it's not coming immediately with the phone? Uh, that's <laughs> not yet so what I'm yeah. doing now is recording a video. Nice. So there'll be uh, social media platforms will start to support more and more 3D content. So we're expecting this to be coincided with. Uh, correct. Yeah, we we have uh, Awamoto here from our Japanese research center as well. Uh, we have members from our Shenzhen and China staff here as well. Correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, I work on the algorithms for this uh, 3D modeling part. And the Japanese Research Center has done a lot of work on the rigging and the animation technology. So automatically, you know where the legs and arms are? That's true. How do you know this? So we, from the shape, mesh information and the texture information, we estimate the, where is the, should be placed the bone. Then, in the base of the algorithm. Is it, is it possible for somebody to edit this later and adjust a little uh, bit? No, or it's just automatic only? Just now, it's automatically. We estimate automatically using the AI chip sensor. We are aware a lot of learning a database, and where should be better price, we can calculate them. So it works great with pandas, yeah. but it's supposed to work with everything? Um, no, not everything. Is, it's really difficult, you know. But basically, we support only the two legs, two arms, two arms arm, one and head. one head. Yeah. Which is a standard, I think. Standard. It's a standard for this planet. Every animal is like this. Uh, now, kind of. now we, we, are trying, we are trying to support for the quad loop character. Ooh. Yeah. You should do spiders. Spider, many yeah. legs. Maybe. Now it's difficult, but maybe in the near future we try to. But yeah. we need to collect more, a lot of data, you know. 
Uh, if possible, yeah. So, uh, is it possible that uh, can I scan somebody, a whole body, and uh, start playing with that body? Uh, we, th this technology is meant for small objects, so toys like this. Is it because this is, this is a limited uh, IR scanner can't go too far? Well, uh, everything's been optimized for small objects, so that includes uh, the hardware technology as well as the software. So what we're really trying to do is take advantage of that 3D sensor technology and expand the use IR. cases. So the IR is very important. The infrared technology. There's no chance because this has really nice Leica on the back. It has three of them with different uh, focal length and everything. So couldn't it kind of scan from the back too, maybe? Potentially? Or is that a completely different algorithm? It will be in the near future. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a different? No, no uh, maybe. The future, yeah. yeah. But it's already amazing. So the, uh, is there any chance that I could uh, scan a bunch of these? Let's say a kid has lots of them. Scan them all. Then uh, put them in the game and design a game. Sure, yeah, yeah, that would be definitely. No, we will try to share in the 3D model service, and finally, we will try to make the this character to the game, and we play the game. That would be so amazing, right? Yeah, right. If you could do that. But then I would like to also scan the, the room, right? And have the room be part of the game. So you need to Correct. add more stuff. How much Correct. stuff are you ready to add? Uh, I mean, uh, it's not easy to do stuff. Nobody has done this, right? Uh, no, this is the first time that this 3D object technology is being deployed on a smartphone. So we're, we're really excited about that, and I think in the future you'll see a lot more 3D technologies from Huawei. Hopefully there's some kind of access to the app developers, right, to this kind of stuff. So if you want to have more and more stuff from the app developers, we'll see if it's some kind of API or something. Yeah, this, this potential, yeah. Because what is the file format for that 3D model? Uh, there, there's new emerging standards. This file format is an OBJ file, which is a, is a classic file format. There's also a JLTF file, which is... Yeah, trying to support now. So in the new future... Oh, now we don't have the Facebook... But you don't near, have what, sorry? Yeah, we don't have the, this function, we don't have the Facebook sharing, but in the near future, we can upload the Facebook page on the 3D model. You know. So you can put it on Facebook? Yeah, for Facebook. But that's just a shared what, animation? or You can share the 3D model. So uh, Facebook supports 3D universes, kind of? Uh, yeah. Some kind of thing? Yeah. Now they don't have, they don't support the animation. So in the near future, if they support the animation file, it's also potentially possible. What would be cool also, let's say you scan this beautifully, but then with the back camera, as you film some person, who's doing the movements that you want this panda to do. You know? Sure. Like, uh, what's the name of that famous actor who's the Kung Fu Panda guy? Well, they scan his body, right? Uh, and sure. put him in the cartoon. Sure, yeah, to, yes. To, it's motion capture. You think about it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That, maybe this uh, OBJ file that you're talking about, maybe it's already supporting some apps. Maybe there are some apps that kind of let you import these 3D models already into games. Sure, there, there are a number of, I think, desktop or PC platforms that allow you to bring in the 3D content that you've generated on, on the Mate 20 Pro. So you, you could use it in a, in a gaming platform, something like Unity, maybe Unreal, Sketchfab. There's a number of, I think, different suppliers or uh, services that allow you to host that or develop with that. Because imagine this little uh, issue that some parents, I heard, they have, they have these kids that are playing too much games. But imagine if the parents say, you can play the games as long as you've designed the game yourself. You know? They have to scan all their toys. Sure. They have yeah. to put on some uh, thing in the game and say, I want it to be a racing game or something. Yeah, true. So you sure. have it, You have the next few months, you have some job to do, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah? yeah. But uh, that's very cool. So uh, I think that it's not only the game, but also making their films, I think. So, you know, yeah, animation cartoons. film. Yeah. If the user upload the 3D model in the network, we can correct uh, you want, and you can, uh, how to say, assign the character and make their animation, the short nice. movie, like animation, yeah, this kind of object, you know. That would be so cool. Yeah. And uh, like I was watching on the internet, some guy started 30 years ago doing these Lego movies. It'd be nice, you build a Lego, you scan your Lego, you put it in a movie, you start making it. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we've all seen Pixar, right? So bringing toys to life or animating toys into some kind of short video, something that we can share with our friends, I think is uh, very realistic. I think there's a huge potential in uh, also product scanning. Uh, people want to scan their products. 
put them in, sure, sell sure. them, and let people go around the product. It's sure. a dream of a long time to have sure. this kind of stuff work. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's cool. That uh, this this is um, is the first uh, Google certified face scanning everything in the front because some of the other notches are just doing basic stuff. This one has a full face scan stuff, and it goes 20 to 60 centimeters, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's very important to have the AR to have the resolution or the resolution compared to just having multiple camera scanning. Have AR IR mm -hmm. helps a lot. Uh, yeah, the infrared is a part of the 3D sensor technology. So the, there's a dot projector, an infrared camera, flood fill illuminator. Those allow us to generate a 3D shape from that sensor. So what we do when we scan is we're collecting a series of 3D images that we then combine together to form the final model. So that infrared technology is very important for us to build a high quality 3D model. So infrared is a big difference compared to just a bunch of cameras, it's not enough. If you have like all these three cameras, right? There's no chance you could have the same fidelity in the scanning uh, stuff. Well, uh, I mean, there, there are different 3D scanning technologies that can use you know, color cameras. Um, the, the infrared structured light technology that we're using here uh, allows us to do that uh, on, the, on the device itself. So doing that 3D calculation is uh, very power intensive. So we've really optimized it for this structured light technology so that we can lower the compute requirements and do everything on the device. And it's a very detailed scan. How, how, what's the resolution? Is there any, what's, are you able to say what resolution you have or you don't say? Uh, well, the, the resolution is supposed to be sub-millimeter, so it's around, right around like a millimeter of precision for the model that we're generating. And the whole model is like multiple megapixel something? Uh, the final the final model size is um, maybe around 10 megabytes, depending on the size of the object, the complexity of the object. So it's, it's uh, shareable, basically, on social media. I guess it's millions of, uh, what do you call it, uh, triangles or triangles. something. It's not, uh, it's not millions. It's probably closer to tens of thousands. All right. For sharing the object, the Facebook has a limitation for the number of vertices. So we optimize for upload a 3D model, which means it reduces vertices now. Nice. That's really cool. That's awesome. Uh, uh, it would be so cool if maybe in the future there will be an IR that's good enough for like 20 meters. Yeah. And even you can help uh, blind maybe people see. <laughs> yeah, so much. Maybe potentially we can scan the body shape and activate the body to the world, you know. Nice. Control the body, human yeah. avatar, like yeah, VR chat. Nice. Yeah. All right. We're doing a demo for uh, Huawei's new ultra wide angle lens. So switching into the camera mode. It allows me to toggle through different modes here and then to their new ultra wide angle lens. Now, just to give you a quick demo of that, uh, if I point it up towards here, you can see I'm struggling to get all of the uh, hot air balloons in here. If I then press and hold this, I can switch into the ultra wide angle mode and I can get more of that in. Obviously, that's amazing for traveling when you're at city and you're struggling to kind of get a building in because I can't move any further back. So, that's one thing. The second nice feature of that is I can use that same wide angle. Uh, lens to actually use uh, okay, macro? the macro already, mode, yes. So yeah, I can actually take a picture there, guy, yeah. and you can see with that I've got incredible detail. You can find ants. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. You don't have ants here, right? Uh, no, we've got um, cycles okay. and um, this little confer. thing, real people. Yeah. Okay, I just confirm that. Okay. And so, all right. So it's great for macro and wide. Wide angle, yeah. And uh, and it still maintains everything that the P20 Pro still uh, did. And uh, if you have right here the, the Mate 20 Pro. Yes. Uh, so, so, so one of the most important things people say about uh, cam uh, smartphones is the camera. OK. So it has great camera. Yes. So um, they retained the 4028 combination uh, on the Pro and the X, I believe. I could be wrong. So just feel free to uh, double check that. But yeah, they retained all of the, the nice previous cameras that was on the P20 Pro. Uh, also, just quickly, just to show you the um, fingerprint sensor, which I think is amazing. Um, so as soon as I touch the screen, it will pop up with this top logo, and then I can press on that, and it will just recognize my fingerprint in screen. 
Anywhere on the screen or only there? Uh, just there. Uh, it allows me to kind of free up this space uh, and free up also the back space as well. So it's more yeah. natural uh, movement. But there's a lot of space in the back for I suppose so, but it's just, it's just like a little empty. bit more natural. You're right there. And it, when, whenever there was a, a scanner at the bottom, it was almost like you was trying yeah. to reach from the bottom. That's just a natural space. Well, it's great to have it in the screen, but I think it'd be great to have both. I but suppose so, yeah. That's why maybe I, I prefer that one. Prefer yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Mate 20, yeah. which is a fingerprint scanner yeah. in the back. Uh, th there's many other features about the phone that it has a 4200 battery. It does, yeah. Um, so we're, we're just doing that demo here, but yeah, it has a 4200 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it has two Android cameras. 9. Yep. Uh, and also EMUI uh, 9 here as well. Emulated UI. Yep. And uh, the notch. Indeed. Famous notch. So there's a bigger notch on the Pro. That's because you get the IR scanner and everything. Yes, so that's got the 3D face tracking. So if you have lots of notifications, it's just going to fit everything in this small area right here. Uh, it does leak on over to the right hand side as well. But then if you have too many, does it make a if second row two, or it's not going to do what that? What it does, no, it will stay as it is. It will. Um, what it will do with the second row is it doesn't add anything more onto the screen, so it preserves all your space. But it does start adding numbers just there. So if you've oh. got six notifications, it will show you a little six icon there. All right. So this is a OLED. Indeed. And, uh, this this uh, backside uh, special te technology on the back. Uh, little reflections and stuff. You know, Huawei made 20 series. We bring you an exquisite design, the ultimate performance, and a remarkable photography, and also with intelligent appearance. The public up is much lower. And the display of this screen, the ratio is 18.7 to 9, a more wide screen. And we're proud of that on the May 20 series, we achieved a very high screen to body ratio. The Mate 20 we achieved 88%, and the Mate 20 Pro we reached near 87%. So with this in-screen fingerprint, we can fully use this. In the Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro, we have this of a dual SIM card. And a SIM card slot, you can install either a SIM card or another memory card. So it's, uh, it's a very unique design. So I think that the industry will build a new standard for the extended memory. You know, the main series always bring you a strong performance. Let's see that in the mid 20, we install the latest 7 nanometer KV980 chipset. This KV980 is the middle the industry is the most powerful and intelligent SOC chipset and a smooth operation. <laughs> and we make a comparison of the world top 50 apps that launch speed. We launch these apps, we achieve one second faster than the other phones you can see. This is a comparison. We have over 30% longer, even 38% longer. You don't worry about that when you go back home. Not go back home uh, you know, on the way that you know, phone is out of battery. You can see that we achieved 440 percent faster than the others. The wide chart. But uh, you know that's uh, the more more important is more, more quick the wide chart. Then the wide chart. Then the other phones wide chart because the inbox uh, you only the one amp, uh, file uh, one amp, uh, small chart. Why is it more chart? You can use the Huawei Mate 20 Pro to charge your other devices. Near 40 percent faster than the other phones. 40 percent faster. In the weak signal area, we have much better antenna performance. You can see we achieved 120 percent antenna performance compared with other phones. For the checking and everything. And for Huawei Mate 20. Series we support dual frequency band right. GPS. Pardon me? We not only support yeah. L1, but we also support L5. 125 percent larger than the other sensors. 
it gets much larger. The sensor is the key <coughs> for the low light condition of photo photography. 100,000 ISO. So then you don't need to take several lens instead of just one Huawei Mate 20 phones. You can see they are very interesting. The ghost color, but the background all becomes black and white. You know, waving as well, oh. and we're recording this live. And what's really neat about it is that we can take a look at the video we just recorded prior. So Richard, please look at the big screen, and let's play back that video. Smartphone using large screen, large display, your TV display, or your de desktop large display. We use a USB cable, Type-C cable connected with the phone to expand the, the phone screen to a large screen. But today, on the May 20 series, we make it white. Use the displays or the mirror cast, it can directly connect with them. But if not support that, we have the wireless dongle to support the wireless connection. So let's see. <laughs> if the not support the mirror cast. You know, uh, today we upgrade the Huawei Share to Huawei Share 3.0. Platform that brings AI to everyone. It aims to make your phone even smarter by adapting to the world around you and the things that you like to do on your phone. With a signature device, you can enjoy vivid HDR videos, immersive 360 video, and the fastest possible video load times, all while using less bandwidth. So Huawei Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro, the best enterprise mobile office choice. It's my pleasure to present to you the brand new Porsche design Huawei Mate 20 RS or fourth generation handset in cooperation with Huawei. Or 512, we two for your selection. And the inbox, we have the genuine laser case inside of this box. It's a large screen, 7.2 inch. We bring you extra display, extra power, and also extra performance. This, this, with this large screen, we want to bring you more productivity, more entertainment. This 7.2 inch ultra large screen is an audio display. They have a very high contrast ratio, a high color situation, and also with very high screen to body ratio. You can draw, uh, you can write on the phones. So it's um, bring you more productivity. More convenience. And also bring your extra power. 5,000 mAh battery, huge battery inside. With the world's first Viper Champion and the graphing film cooling technology together. What's that? The Viper Champion is a white, uh, that's, that's, a brown, uh, that's, that's a color, golden color, that's why. We are the first one in this industry including this. Compared with the graphite film, we are better than them and much better than copper film. So by this way, we can make the best cooling. We can best uh, conduct for the thermal thermal conduct. And compared with the, the other, uh, like Nintendo Switch, very popular uh, game, we make a comparison with them. We have a larger screen, 7.2 inch instead of. Okay, we have. More higher resolution, 1080p compared with 720p. Okay, and also we have a larger battery. But more importantly, we have doubled the, the gaming uh, battery life. 6.67 hours compared with that three hours. I want to show you. I will make this uh, longer. How can you? So, 80% the power consumption reduction. So you can see two weeks battery life, much longer than all the others. You know the most heavy things for the uh, for the smartwatch is uh, it's very easy to run the battery. Typically, it's running just one day or less than two days. 
Because in this uh, you know, touch screen, colorful screen, it's uh, very small and very tiny, but uh, very comfortable when you wear it. So you can full screen touch. How you make tiny pri uh, prices for the uh, 4 gig plus 128 gig uh, byte? The price is 799 euros. And the 6 plus 128 gig That's why it's uh, 849 euros. And the Tandy Pro, the price is 1,049 euro. It's going to be available from, it will start to sell it from the Sittings today. And the Tandy X, the price is 899 euro. It will be available from 26 of this, this month. And this is a Porsche Yang Power Inmate 20 eyes The tools first selection. And this is a Huawei Watch GT, very competitive price. You can see that. It's a strong Porsche 199 euro. And a classic Porsche 249 euro. And a Huawei Band 3 Pro is 99 euro. Thank you. From the carriers and the network from Huawei, but nobody knows Huawei. Only in recent years. We start to do the consumer business, to do the B2C business. Then, with your media, all your guys, your trust and support, and then let the consumer to know Huawei. I'm very grateful. I'd like to please this chance to express my sincere thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Huawei, we are a company that's 30 years old. And we we invest so much money on technology and innovations. We, our R&D investments are in the top three, uh, top six in the world uh, in the last year. So every year we are increasing uh, our research and development investment. So we want to take the leading in the industry, our technology and innovation. So I'm very glad that today that here you will miss our new generation, the major series smartphone launch. So this, I think that you know, we will continue to put the resource and technology and innovation, continue to take a leader, leadership of our technology and innovation in the world. So I think that we can do better and better technology, better and better innovation, and we can bring the best innovation to the global consumers with your help, with your media, your help to let the consumers know, know us. And also, please don't hesitate to to give your feedback to Huawei, we shall we can improve. We will do our best to improve. We will continue to improve. And also, we will strongly partnership with our partner. And in the European market, we have partners today, the Porsche and also Renka, and also, also many, many local partners. So we want to partnership to build a build win-win the business. So for future, I do believe that with this kind of partnership with the community and women, we have all better future. Thank you, thank you. And uh, hope that you have a wonderful evening. That's, uh, uh, I'd like to do oh. And uh, thank you. That's cheers. Thank you. Cheers.